All right, today we're gonna go from this to this. Magic. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Scott here, and today I wanted to talk about perspective blending. So what is perspective blending? Well, anytime you are using a wide angle lens to shoot a landscape photo, most of the time with um, big mountains in the background or kind of big objects in the background, what's gonna happen is those objects are gonna be very small in your final image. Uh, typically, you know, I would tell people if they're using a wide angle lens to get really close to their subject, in this case, this mooring block that's in Kirby Cove. Um, but the problem with that is, is that you're going to end up with whatever's in the background being real small and perhaps uh, leaning like this one is you know, the Golden Gate Bridge leaning in the background. And that just doesn't look right. I mean, I think it's a really cool photo, but the the fact that the Golden Gate Bridge in the background here is so out of whack distortion wise uh, really doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't look correct to my eye and hopefully it wouldn't look correct to anybody else's eye too. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how to change the perspective of the bridge without affecting the perspective of the mooring block. So typically, what you would do in this situation, um, if you were shooting architecture photography, typically what you would do is you would go to the develop module and you would go to transform and you would hit one of these auto options here, like I could click auto, which isn't gonna do anything because Lightroom can't figure out what, what this is in the background. Um, you could try level or vertical or guided or full, whatever. Um, guided actually is really nice because that allows you to draw lines. Um, but typically what you would do is you'd come to the vertical distortion slider here and you would just you know, vertical distort this like so until the bridge stood up correctly. But the problem with that is, is that if I hit constrain crop, um, I lose a lot of the foreground here. Now this, you know, typically you might say, okay, well that's fine. Like I'll just shoot a little bit wider to get that particular shot. But I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna change the distortion of the foreground here because now this mooring block looks absolutely massive. Um, and if we look at the before and the after, you can see that it's, you know, it's changed it. You know, it's changed the bridge for the better, but the size of the bridge is still the same. It has not changed the size of the bridge, which is the you know one of the big problems with shooting with a wide angle lens, is that whatever you're shooting in the background gets really small and also distorted. So without you know changing the size of the mooring block uh, or the distortion of the mooring block and making the bridge larger, how do you do that? Well, you need Photoshop. You need Photoshop to do that because what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this image two separate ways. So we're gonna edit this half of the image, the, the top half of the image separately from the bottom half of the image. And I don't mean edit like, you know, using, you know, uh, graduated filters and whatnot, you know, like I did here to edit this. I mean, like we're gonna transform the top differently than the bottom using some perspective blending, okay? So let's undo the perspective blend here. Let's just go back to the original image um, as it was processed by me. Um, and let's take a look at the before and the after. So there's the before, that's out of camera, and there's after. So all I did was I would process it just like a normal process in the basic panel here. So we've adjusted the highlights and the shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, dehaze actually didn't touch those. Um, we did our lens corrections, but we did not do anything to the transform. Because again, as you saw, that doesn't really work that well. So. After you've processed the image to look kind of how you want it to look, that's where the Photoshopping comes in. So we're gonna right click on this, hit edit in Photoshop. All right, so now that we're in Photoshop, this is where the magic happens, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna copy this background layer. So I can drag that down to the new layer icon and do it, or I can hit Command J um, or Control J to kind of make a duplicate of it. We'll just delete that. Um, and from there, it gets a little bit muddy. Uh, there's a couple ways that you could change this. Um, this video has perspective blending in the title. So in Photoshop, didn't know if you knew this, but there is a tool called Perspective Blend. If I go to Edit, sorry, Perspective Warp, that's the name of the tool. What this means is that I can drag a box around the top portion of the image, because that's the 
part of the image that I want to change. And I can also draw another box down here in the bottom. And if I draw that box close enough, you'll see that the, uh, the lines there change to like this gray. That means that if I do this, that they'll be locked together. So what that is, is it's like I have a box here that's going to control the top portion, and then I have a box here that I can control the bottom portion. But when I move the top, it's not going to change the bottom. Okay? So let's go to warp, and then see what happens. So you can see it's not changing the bottom all that much when I move this around. So that's really handy. I'm going to hit the shift key and click on the top bar here so that it stays the same uh, no matter what I do. And then I am going to move that one there, move that one there. Let's get that kind of there. So now the bridge is you know standing up straight. And then I can move this out and this out. And let's just make this a little bigger. So I'm going to drag that out that way and drag that out that way. And then I can kind of make that come there, make that come there. Let's get that nice and tall, like so. And we'll get that right about there. All right, so you see the problem here? I'm doing the same thing I did in Lightroom, but you know, I, I can obviously fit everything in the frame. But again, like I run into the issue of the box here changing its perspective, you know? If I want to make the bridge larger, I can't really do that without affecting the bottom. Now, you could. You could make more boxes with this particular tool, but mm, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to hit cancel here, and I'm going to show you how I want to do this, okay? So what we're going to do is with that background layer selected, we're going to go to filter, and we're going to go to camera raw filter. So we're basically going to use the develop module in Lightroom to do this. It's essentially the same thing. So we're going to zoom in here on the bridge, and again, like, with the bridge or any kind of architectural element, you got to figure out what is the thing that you can measure um, your perspective off of. So in this case, right, uh, the only thing that's going to be straight up and down are these cables here. The 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 bay or sorry, the base of the bridge, the the roadway is not going to be level, and these guys. The, um, the towers are not going to be level either. The only thing that's going to be level on this entire bridge is the cables. So that's what we're going to measure off of or, or um, transform everything based off of these cables here. So to do that, we're going to take the transform tool, which is up here in the top, and click that. And I'm going to draw a line, this pink line here. I'm going to click and I'm going to draw this line down the cable so that it is right on top. And then I'm going to hold the space bar and I'm going to move over to the other side of the bridge. We'll zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to make sure that that line is drawn right on top of that cable. And we let go. And now we zoom out. You'll see that the bridge is perfectly straight up and down. Or not the bridge, but the, uh, the cables are straight up and down. That is the idea. That's what we want. We want those cables to be straight up and down. <clears throat> I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see that we have one element of the image nice, right? Just this top section here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of align all this here. So I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer down to about 50%. I'm going to grab my Move tool, which is V on the keyboard. And I'm going to kind of put the horizons together there. And you notice that the bridge got a little smaller. So we got to make this a little bigger. So I'm going to go to transform it now. Command T or Control T on the keyboard will do that. You can also get there by edit and then transform because we're going to scale this. And I'm going to click this and I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to click this and I'm going to drag it out. Let's just make this 150%. So I'm going to go up here into the width, and I'm going to type in 150. And there's a lock button here so that it's locked to 150 on both sides. And then I'm going to move it so that, again, the horizons are relatively at the same level. So there, let's just check there. So the horizons are perfectly aligned, or close enough, I should say. We'll return, or hit return to confirm the changes. 
we'll grab the opacity and put that back to 100%. And again, we're suffering from the same problem that we had in Lightroom. But here's where Photoshop comes into play. We're gonna layer mask this out. All of this bottom portion is gonna go away. So I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key with this top layer selected, and I'm gonna click on the layer mask icon right there. And now the black layer mask is hiding or concealing all of this layer. So we wanna paint with a white brush to reveal this layer. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger. I'm gonna paint at 100% and I'm gonna paint that in. All right, I'm gonna go on the horizon here and I'm gonna make sure the horizon is nice and painted and we'll bring all that out like so. All right, now we've done it. We have it nearly perfect. But the problem that we're running into now is that this looks bad. So we're gonna zoom in on this side. I'm gonna flip my colors to black on the foreground tool, and we're gonna conceal part of this layer again. I'm gonna make this uh, brush a little smaller, and now we're going to conceal it. So we'll bring this in. This is why it's important, or was important, to make sure that the horizons were nice and straight or at least on top of one another so that we can bring all of this back. Make our brush a little bigger here. Go back over this way. Make our brush a little smaller and we're gonna paint with 30% now. And then when we back out, we have our final image. So let's see the before and after. There's before, there's after. Before and after. So much better. Now the bridge is nice and large. So we can now close this. I'll hit no so you can see what I did before and after. So there's what we got after some more processing in Lightroom see it full screen. So there's our after shot and our before shot. And you can see that the perspective on the mooring block has not changed, but the bridge has gotten nice and big and it's nice and straight up. So there you have it. That's how I do perspective blending in Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. It helps us zoom up the charts when people search for perspective blending. Uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. New videos every week-ish. And I'll see you next time. Happy shooting.